Hey, thank you for joining me. I'm Juan. I got a real special guest today. I got Dr. Dean. If you don't know, Dr. Dean has a YouTube channel. He's a physician. He talks about interesting, innovative medical technology. There's a link below. Make sure you check his channel. I follow Dr. Dean. I watch a lot of his videos. Very, very informative. If you're trying to learn just about medical devices, medical equipment, technology, genomics, anything in the medical field, Dr. Dean is the man. Hey, thanks for joining me, Doc. Today, you know, we, we talk about Sensionics quite a lot. We both have Plenty of videos on Sensionics. He has excellent coverage. I've done some coverage also on it myself. And today they had their earnings. I think earnings today was a little bit important because they announced their 180-day approval for their CGM device and the stock just tanked after that. So it brought a lot of attention and people wanted to see some positive news to see what does the revenue say? Why did the stock tank? And I feel like they answered some of those questions. What's your opinion? What you, you've you heard the earnings? What was your opinion, and what do you think about it? Yeah, I, I listened to as much as I was able to to listen from the webcast. I don't think I heard every bit of it, but overall, you know, I, my focus is really trying to look at the underlying medical technology and to see if this is going to be something that's innovative and somebody would actually want to use the product. Because at the end of the day, you're looking for the upcoming years to see if this product will end up being utilized or by by the patients that have type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. So if the product is good, I think it will gain traction. I generally think that's how things go within the medical field. If there's a new drug or a new medical device or whatever, and it's effective and helpful for the patients, they'll request it and, and physicians will recommend it. And so I think, you know, the key thing that, you know, I look for is is, is the medical technology. And obviously the financials of, of, of the company are important to make sure that they're healthy so that they can actually execute and get to where they want to be with their with their product. Excellent. Excellent. So let's let's look here a few points, their recent highlights. We're not going to get into everything in the yeah. finance, but here they talk about their fully implantable third generation device, SPA technology, their MART 8.5. And that's been a point of their emphasis, right, with selling. And, and why is that so important, you know, with, with the accuracy and, and the CGM? Yeah, so the MART is the mean absolute relative difference. That's basically the difference between the, the sugar reads that you would find on a medical grade glucose monitoring device compared to the CGM, because the CGM is getting the sugar levels, not directly from the capillary or the, the blood vessel where the, where the sugar is, right? You're trying to get a representation of your sugar within the bloodstream. And so these CGMs are in the interstitial space in the case of the Eversense device. And so it's not completely in line with the sugar levels in the blood, but you want it to be within a, a good range. And so the lower the number in a nutshell means the more accurate the device. So 8.5%, you know, that's one of the better accuracies amongst uh, these new devices in the CGM space. Okay, so the first thing was their revenue. Their revenue for this last quarter of the year was 4 million, which was higher than 3.9 compared to their last quarter. US revenue was 0.7 million compared to 0.4 million. So they did increase in the United States also last quarter, which is good. The market didn't like this. There was a gross decline by 3.1 million compared to when their gross profit was 0.5 million. And this was my thesis. So I did a video and it was, it was a thesis at the time, you know, my assumptions that the reason that their revenue was so estimated to be so low for 2022 is because of the backlog back orders that they have to write off. And now that they have the new device, they still have a lot of the other devices that they're not going to be able to sell anymore. So that's one issue. And then the rollout, the rollout to actually implementing the 180 day, there's going to be a delay. People think that they get FDA approval and then automatically tomorrow you can start selling it. And, and that's just not reality, right? I mean, and to, to that point, I mean, it's a new product. They have to roll it out, manufacture, and also create awareness, I think, amongst the general community the diabetic community. I mean, this is a pretty novel device that not too many people were aware of. I think the 90-day device didn't get that much attraction. No. I know they were hit with some some challenges related to COVID in 2020. And uh, because it, because this was an in-office procedure, obviously that led to more challenges with the company. But I think, you know, I think that's um, something to note that, you know, creating awareness for this new 180-day device, you know, when somebody comes in and they're diabetic and they're looking to get a CGM, I think the go-to is, okay, the Dexcom or the Freestyle Libre by, by Abbott. I, I did create an Excel sheet. Maybe we can look at that at some, at some point, but we just yeah. kind of compare the different devices. 
But I think, you know, part, you know, I think the company really needs to to market and create more awareness through social media and so forth, which is what they said they wanted to do. They said they said Facebook, though, they, it's like are people Facebook. still using Facebook. That's what the, that's what the, if you listen, they said that their their essentia, their strategy is Facebook and social media. I was just like, Facebook, <laughs> man, you you just age yourself. So, uh, targeted advertisement. <laughs> yeah. So there. So this was another thing that I mentioned for 2022. I I do have a pharmacist friend, and he said that some recruiters or something, some sales individuals, they came into to to kind of educate him on the different CGM devices, and one of the ones they mentioned was was the EverSense. And so, wow, that's one point of uh, that's an anecdotal or a story where you know those are boots on on the ground potentially. Yeah, yeah, those. That's what you want to hear. So they say the research and development expense increased 3 million to 7.7. Now you're going to see this for sure in 2022 increase even more. And that was something that they reiterated that their R&D is going to increase because of the 365. So they expect to apply to start testing in second quarter and they're hoping to get approval to start testing on the 365 in the third quarter. Yeah, I think what what they mentioned, they have to get like an IDE. I think that's called an investigational device exemption. I think that's something that they have to apply for with the FDA in order to move forward with the clinical trial. So the sales general admin expense, big change, decreased 2.4 million to 5.8 million, which they say that the decrease was primarily due to the sales support in Essentia. So Essentia essentially taking over some of the marketing, which is the whole point of Essentia, right? Help the marketing, uh, help with the marketing and commercializing. Since that partnership is working out now and they're starting to sell, they had to get rid of some of their workforce. And I believe they got rid of half their workforce. So you see here in 2019, they had 190 employees full-time and 2020, it's down to 82. So that's yeah. going to make a big difference to the sales general admin cost. Right. But for sure, next year, the research and development is going to go up because of the 365 and all that. So overall, numbers aren't terrible. They did tell us to anticipate a slow first and second quarter. Yeah. And this is what kind of like upset everybody and upset the stock price, I guess. Yeah. But uh, people saw this and then they saw that six insiders were selling, mm -hmm. which wasn't actual inside selling. Like it, it you know, there was, that's just a false assumption. When they got this FDA approval, they were granted shares as kind of like a reward for reaching a milestone. And right after, if you look at the time that they were awarded those shares, the next day they had a sale, but the okay. sale was a very small part. Part. And if you read the SEC filings, you sh it shows that it was a small portion to cover the tax of the grant. I mean, in comparison, you know, obviously those revenues relative to the market cap of the company you know, it's not that much, you know, but obviously it's, yeah. a, it's a new company, um, you know, lower tier company. They've had their struggles and so forth. But um, the, the question you have to, to ask is, um, you know, why is the revenue not not as much? You you know, with this new FDA approval, I think that's the question people had. Shouldn't we expect the revenues to go up? Shouldn't we be seeing this device gain more traction and utilization? You know, I, I can't directly answer the question whether or not a diabetic patient will prefer this one or the next. Um, but the question I think we have to ask is, is this device good enough to, you know, to be along the sides of these juggernauts, Dexcom and Abbott, you know, because I don't, I don't think one, one size fits all when it comes to a CGM. Yeah. So I made this uh, spreadsheet here to kind of compare the, the major CGMs on the market to see if uh, the Eversense actually has a viable space. So we talked about the 90 day device. Some people do like it. Um, but obviously, you know, the 180 day device that was, you know, obviously going to be a major improvement compared to the 90 day. So looking at the MARD, we talked about how this is the accuracy, the lower, the better. Now, in general, below, you know, 9% is, is generally very good. Um, so, you know, a few percentage points here and there, or um, it's not going to make a huge difference once you're once you're below, say, 10%. Um, but we do see improved accuracy compared to the Freestyle Libre with the Eversense E3 device. And then the G7 Dexcom, I don't believe this is out yet on the market, but their MARD is reportedly the best right now, which is 8.2. And what's interesting, if you looked at the Promise trial from the Sensionics group, they actually had MARDs that were actually less than 8%, even in the 7%, because as you're calibrating the device, 
you're basically improving the accuracy as you go along because you're basically calibrating it to your own sugar levels within the bloodstream. So the more sugar sticks you do, actually, you're going to get a better MARD overall. And so this is a mean of all the values, but actually the device became a little bit more accurate as you progressed with the 180 days. And so that's that's interesting. And from what I've read from reviews, it sounds like a lot of people do like the Eversense device and its accuracy relative to Dexcom and, and the Freestyle Libre from what I've heard. So people do like that accuracy and some people enjoy the control. So that's with regards to the accuracy. And, and, and in general, um, though, under un, under ten percent is like what? That's that's what's acceptable, right? I pretty much under ten from from the literature. It suggests that if you're under ten, that's a reasonable range to dose your insulin for the most part. Assuming that they have certification with the FDA in order to do that as well. Like you need to obviously get clearance from the FDA to to use your CGM with dosing your insulin because insulin can cause issues if if the it's not accurate. I think what was interesting when you looked at the data that this device obviously is lasting 180 days, you would assume that the, the accuracy would get worse over time, but it actually improved or and stayed consistent. And so looking at the ICGM status, so this was talked about during the earnings call. And I thought that this was an important point with regards to the ICGM status, that's integrated uh, CGM with the uh, insulin pump. And so that's an important feature, I would say, for people that have type one diabetes. So here's a graphic here of an insulin pump. Basically, it carries insulin, and then you have your CGM, which is recording the sugar levels. And so it's nice when these can two when these two devices can communicate, and then you can deliver the insulin uh, based on the CGM. And so there's tandem diabetes, and then the pod uh, or the insulin by Omnipod, which is by the company Insulet, which also has an insulin pump. That's a nice feature that a lot of type one diabetics, in particular, want with their devices. And integration. So one of the things that I was wondering about was when Eversense or, or would actually get the ICGM status. And so from my understanding, Tim Goodnow, he was saying that they were holding off until they got the IDE approved for their 365 day device. But I do think that that's important, especially for the type one diabetic patients that want to have an insulin pump with their CGM. So I'm hopeful that they'll be able to push for that ICGM status. Now the Freestyle Libre and the G7 Dexcom they can integrate with an insulin pump directly. And so going back to the calibration situation, we know that that it's actually two sticks initially when you get your CGM installed, the Eversense E3. And then I believe after the 21 day mark, it goes down to once per day. And then obviously the duration for the Eversense is 180 days compared to 14 days for the Freestyle Libre 3 and the G7. And then talking about some of the advantages. And, and so the reason I wanna talk about the advantages and disadvantages, and maybe we can have a discussion in a second, Juan, but looking at the advantages from the Eversense, the question you have to ask are, are patients that are coming in to see their physician, you know, basically gonna request the Eversense, right? You're gonna say you have 10, 10 people that come in, right? You know, they're looking to get a CGM to, to better manage their diabetes. And so they're looking for a medical device to make that easier, right? And so what are they going to go for? Right now, it's, you know, most people go with the Freestyle Libre 3 or the G7, you know, kind of whatever their insurance is willing to pay for. Some would say that the G7 is more accurate than the Freestyle Libre. So, a lot, you know, a lot of people go with that G7. So the, the question you have to ask, are people going to, you know, switch that all together? Do you need everyone to switch? Or do you just need one or two people out of, say, 10 people to say, you know, I'm going to try the Eversense. That's the one that fits for me. And so I don't think that, you know, this company needs to get the full market share, right? Because they're going to be making a better product down the line in the upcoming years with the 365 once they get the integration with the CGM and then also reduce the calibrations. So that's kind of the question, you know, that, that we can talk about. But some of the advantages for the Eversense is it's two sensors per year. Yeah, I mean, two sensors per year. That's that's pretty good. I, you know, two doctor visits. I think in terms of diabetes management, you have to see your physician or your your healthcare provider, nurse practitioner, physician assistant on a regular basis, you know, usually every three months to check your HbA1c, to make sure your sugars are in line, to check your blood pressure, etc. So it's not un unreasonable to say that a person's going to go see their doctor if they have, you know, diabetes that they're managing with insulin at least twice a year. That's that's pretty, pretty typical, you know, to go to see a doctor. And one of the good things that I, I heard from the earnings call is that they said, that they're going to set it up such that nurse practitioner can come to right, your right. and install the device. So, I yeah. mean, you know, the, the question mark where people are like, I don't want to go to the doctor. 
I think that's a good way to kind of address that issue. So this is how it's installed. I've never installed one of these devices, but it seems like you make a small incision. And then there's this kind of cartridge system where you can just insert the sensor and then you put a stereo strip on it. You don't even need to do any stitch. So it's pretty easy. You know, I would imagine pretty much anyone, you know, that's licensed could potentially do this procedure in office, which just takes a few minutes. With, with the Eversense E3 device, you, you could potentially take the transmitter off. And I think that's kind of their selling point. You can go swimming, you can do contact sports, There's, but then the disadvantage is no pump integration and then the calibration feature. And so the big question I have for you, Juan, say you're a diabetic patient, you know, uh -huh. and you're trying to get a new CGM for yourself, right? And you're going in and you're trying to pick between these three devices. Do these benefits outweigh the negatives? Or maybe not for you, but do you think somebody would be interested in this device? I think that's the question you have to answer. You know, if you're somebody that's, you know, in my perspective, and I'll give you the floor in just a moment. In my yeah. perspective, if I'm somebody that's very active, you know, I, I'm swimming or I'm doing a lot of contact sports or I'm outdoors a lot. Perhaps I might might opt for the Eversense. Maybe if I'm more, I want to be more on top of the management of my diabetes, perhaps my thought process is, you know, if I'm brushing my teeth, I don't mind doing a finger stick to verify like the calibration is correct, you know, between my device and 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 the true readings. And so that's my perspective. And I, I could imagine that there would be, you know, at least one out of say 10 people or two out of 10 people that would opt for this Eversense device, even though there's still calibrations involved because of some of the other advantages that you have with it. I mean, what are your thoughts? Do you think the majority of people will go for the Eversense device or do you think that they would prefer, I'm gonna go with the G7, uh, you know, I'll get it every 14 days and, and self-install. What are your thoughts, Juan? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm like a little torn, right? So for me, if I'm a diabetic, I wanna get a name brand that's trusted and well known but for practicality right if i actually did my research and i just didn't do a superficial type of search i feel more comfortable with sensionics you know i i want to forget that i'm a diabetic so yeah. putting that device on for 180 days now having to prick yourself twice a day for the first 21 days is a nuisance first 21 days twice you have to kind of poke your finger, but once a day is reasonable, it's practical. You know, people with type two diabetes, they, they, they do finger sticks all the time. You know, like, yeah. I mean, not all the time, like two, three times a day is not unusual. And, you know, I, have you done a finger stick before? It's not that painful, not bothersome. It's, it's, you know, I, sometimes no, you, right. you want to check your sugar levels. You know, when patients are in the hospital, they, they get finger sticks all the time. But, but, but I, you know, I have a family member that has diabetes and it's type two diabetes. So she's, you know, she's not on insulin, but she checks her sugar levels. Oh, my sugar is high or sugar is low. Yeah, she just yeah. gets a, a glucose blood stick and, and she checks it and gets a readout. So that's what I'm saying. I think once per day is not unreasonable. Some of the other advantages to be able to take it off. But at the same time, you know, I, I think that the Freestyle Libre G7 are also great options for people, you know, just being yeah. able to self, you know, self install it. And my perspective, I don't think there's going to, there's a clear winner here. You know, right now you might say Dexcom is, is probably ha is more advantageous, but remember they've been around for, I don't know, three times, two times as long as the Eversense. This is their first device. And I would say that the cal the calibration system with Dexcom used to have to calibrate as well once you got the device. So I, I think that's in the works. You probably already know this, that they plan to get it down to once per week. Yeah. So I think, you know, once you, once you start adding some of these factors in, I think it also makes it more learning. But but what I'm saying is right now, I think the question you have to ask is, is this is this device that they have currently, which is their best product? Is that something something that people would want? That's a great question. I, I'm trying to look at it as a diabetic and I'm I, and not that I'm a diabetic, but I'm trying to look at it if I was a diabetic. But I'm also thinking as an investor, the diabetic part of me, I think I would. I think 180 days. But you also like you feel like a company that's more established and has longevity has been around for 20 years there's there's a comfort that comes with that oh, yeah. so i'm kind i'm kind of torn for the investor part of me i feel comfortable because if you go back first five years they were trading between 11 and 30 dollars and just fluctuating within that range for a long time before they made that massive jump jump to like 600 and something dollars per share so i feel like i feel like i mean the the amount of shares circulating for Sensionics, it's never going to be a six hundred and something dollar share. There's just too many shares out there that they diluted. But I do think that we're catching it at an early stage. In the next year, there's going to be some ups and downs. 
But eventually, it's going to be a stable company. I think they're going to succeed. They've already proven that they can be successful and get their FDA approvals with no hiccups other than COVID. So I think they're going to continue that trend. You know, I feel comfortable on a with a company that that has a history of success getting these FDA approvals. So I think they're just going to keep on going, get that 365, and eventually have like that exponential growth over time. So that's that's kind of it. I, I want to go in early. You know, think about Amazon, right? It was at $130, dropped all the way to $11 or $20, right? But look at it now. So I'm not saying it's going to have that crazy growth, but in the early stage, you're going to have the fluctuation and it's it's a fluctuation yeah. that I'm comfortable with and, and I want to hold for the long term. Yeah. And I... And I, if there's any anybody with diabetes or you know type one, type two diabetes, leave a comment in the comment box below. Uh, you know what, what's your preference? Do you do you like the Freestyle Libre and why, or the Dexcom G7, the EverSense E3 device, enticing to you now that it's 180 days? Personally, and, I, and I'm not trying to be sway one way or another. I probably would, you know, if, if this was me, I, I would probably test out the Sensionics device. I like the fact that it's 180 days to me. One one finger stick at night when I'm brushing my teeth wouldn't bother me that much. And I can make sure that my device is accurate. And then I, you know, I could go swimming, could take it off, go contact sports and so forth. Now, now the person that's a type one diabetic, they're more, more likely to use the insulin pump. But if you have a type two diabetic patient that doesn't really need to use an insulin pump and just kind of needs an overall representation of what their sugars are during the day, they don't want it too high, too low. Then I think that's a good person to take the to take the EverSense E3 device. You know, I'm type two diabetic. I don't need to have. I don't need the insulin pump right now. I just, but I want it in, and I don't want to worry about getting a new one every 14 days in the mail and, and the device coming off and having to replace it and so forth and dealing with that. I, I would probably just, personally would go with with the EverSense. It seems like the people that do do wear it and, and so forth like it. Well, the last thing that I'll point out is on their their earnings call. They mentioned they're doing a trial period where. Somebody that wants to test out their product, it's just a hundred bucks, right? Hundred bucks, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's not right. bad to give it a shot, and and that's yeah. like, and they're they've shown that the people that use their product, they have like more than eighty five percent retention, or yeah. almost like ninety yeah. percent when I saw, and that was with the ninety day device. Right? Yeah. So, you know, we'll see. You know, I think they're projecting revenue and expected outcomes. They could be sandbagging, as they say. You know, you never know. You know, they yeah. might. Just want to, to get to beat, low expectations to, to, to beat those earnings. Yeah, they you might, they might want to you know lowball it, and then you never know, and or the demand might exceed on the expectations, and that's kind of why you could potentially want to be early in on this, and maybe they surprise themselves even with with how good it. But you never know until they test the market. Yeah. I think the ninety day device was a hard sell, you know, especially with COVID and such. But the one hundred and eighty days, it seems a lot more reasonable with reduced yeah, calibration. We, we do know that they're not going to be able to start selling it until April. That's something right. to consider. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully if the sales are good, they share it on Facebook. You know, that's, that's part of their strategy, marketing strategy, make sure they share that on Facebook. Yeah. So that's going to be a big plus. I'm more excited too. Like if, if they decide to try to go into Asia or some other market where there's high yeah. diabetes and mm -hmm. penetrate that market. And my DCF reflects that in 2024 is when they're going to have their biggest jump. When they're established, they've sold their products for the last few years. They, people know that there's a 365, hopefully they have the insulin and that's when I start seeing major growth and, and, you know, I, that's where I anticipate the most growth in 2024 and then obtaining more market share when they actually break that 1% of the market share, 2% of the market share, you know, during those years. Yeah. I think this is a period in time where they just have to execute, you know, yeah. they have to go in the trenches. They have to get their sales reps out there, create awareness amongst the physicians and nurse practitioners and healthcare providers, what is this new device, create awareness amongst the patients and, and show that their, their device is, is up to par with some of these other CGMs. The data supports that it's accurate and so forth, but now they have to execute and they have to, you know, move forward with the ICGM status. I think that's important. Yeah. And, and one, 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 one last point for, for investors, you have to do your own due diligence. You have to be comfortable with your investment because this, this is a really in the value world, this is considered like a, a very a pretty irresponsible investment because it's not like a value play. It's not established. It's not like a, a Microsoft or Apple, or it's not a growth stock with an amazing story that's going to build a moat. It's 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 a risky play. So you have to be comfortable enough to take that risk. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable enough with the risk. I feel okay. You know, in the next few years, I think I'm going to see see compound returns on my investment. So that's what I'm waiting for, and I'm comfortable. So you just make sure you do your own diligence, due diligence, and you're comfortable with your investment. 
Anything you want to close us off with, Dean? Dr. Dean? Dean? No, I, th- I think that's <laughs> a good point. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, there's there's been a lot of medical device companies, pharmaceutical companies, XYZ. And, you know, yeah. they, they don't make it because, you know, for one reason or another. So there's a lot of variables involved. It's, it's not just the product. You have to have a good team uh, to execute. And time will time will tell. I think it sounds like the product is, is good. A lot of people are, have been waiting for it in this case. But, um, you know, we'll see what, you know, what happens in the upcoming months and, and years. And, I, you know, obviously this is not Apple or something like that. Or, yeah, well, yeah. you know, like a Merck or a Pfizer. It's, it's a company that's looking to establish itself. but. You know, there have been other companies that have had a lot of trajectory and upward growth, like Tandem Diabetes, who struggled a lot in the beginning. I and mean, they were making an insulin pump that could help dose based on the CGM. And eventually, you know, they, you know, they were successful. So time will tell, if, you know, first and foremost, is this helpful for the patient and do the patients want it? So we, let's see. Let's see what what happens in the upcoming months and, um, you know, hope for the best, you know, at least a new product on the market for patients with diabetes, you know, that's always a win situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Make sure you subscribe to Dr. Dean's channel. Got some great info. Thank you for joining us. See you on the next video. Take care, guys.